thanks to this list of enablers and others, I've made over 150 videos since the beginning of the pandemic. And you've missed about 70 of them, if you're not supporting the habit, at patreon.com slash doseofbuckley. In the world of Judge Dredd, there are people called Futsies. These are people who have difficulties with living in the fast-paced modern world and end up lashing out in violent or destructive ways. And in real life, this has kind of happened, although in a lot more passive way. Instead of going berserk and shooting up an apartment building, our Futsies just post a lot of memes about when the world was more simple and better for it. They love posting this photo, for example, of an old phone that says, when the phone was tied with a wire, humans were free. Which, anyone posting this definitely never grew up or was an adult in the 90s and had to wait for a phone call. Be it from a friend, a company you applied to and you're waiting to hear back for a job interview, or a girl or guy you were trying to date. The phone rang and your heart fell out of your asshole thinking it's for you, but nope, it's for someone else in the house. And then you're like, Oh, please be quick, I'm waiting for a call. And then, uh-oh, what if they called when someone else was on the phone? Because you don't have call waiting or voicemail. And all you can do is just sit at home and wait. <laughs> yeah, real fucking free. Anyway, our real-life version of Futsies also believe that everything made in the past is better than anything made in the present or the future. Cars, clothes, movies, TV, music, especially music. I've talked about this in a few videos now, most recently in my 90s rap and rocks not dead videos, but these people are just flat out convinced that everything old is better, and everything new is garbage. But of course, those are just opinions, not facts. But what if someone could scientifically prove that music today is getting dumber? Well, someone did. Sort of. A research article has been making the rounds on Reddit and Twitter titled, Why Are Song Lyrics Becoming Simpler? A Time Series Analysis of Lyrical Complexity in Six Decades of American Popular Music. <laughs> now, right off the bat, I think this is a pretty leading title for a research paper. Drop the why, and it becomes, Are Song Lyrics Becoming Simpler? Suggesting they're trying to find out if that's the case, rather than starting from a position of, No, it is the case, we're just going to come up with a way to prove it. But either way, people on Twitter found this and went, See? A comprehensive study on the dumbing down of lyrical substance in popular songs, when we need meaning and thought more than ever. Time for change. This has been obvious to everyone, but finally a paper showing that lyrics to popular songs have become increasingly simple over time. I think rap in particular has been more afflicted than any other genre. I've been distraught about this for a while. Scientific proof that music was better when John Lennon was beating his wife. Now, I don't think that's the exact takeaway the writers were hoping for, but anyway, I'll leave a link to the actual study in the description. It's too long and boring to get into exactly what they did here, but effectively, they looked for compressibility of lyrics from songs that were on the Billboard Hot 100. That is, how often are the same words repeated in the most popular songs? From the article, Higher compression scores signify more repetition and therefore higher simplicity. A score of zero means no compression was possible. Example, if the input were random noise. A score of one means a 50% reduction in size. A score of two means a 75% reduction in size, and so on. For example, Daft Punk's 1997 song, Around the World, repeats the title 144 times and has a compressibility score of 5.42, the maximum in this sample. Nat King Cole's The Christmas Song, 1961, has a low compression score of 0.11. I think there's a little more to it than that, but basically what they're really looking for is repetition. Now, I don't have a PhD and four other people helping me write this video, but I find this very hard to believe. And after looking at their data and the compression scores that some other songs got, I question it further. Consider this your peer review. Yes, yes, pop songs today are pretty repetitive. No one's questioning that. But have you fucking heard pop songs in the 50s and 60s? I looked up some of the compression scores given to songs I was sure would rate high. Not as high, of course, as Daft Punk's Around the World, but that's such an outlier anyway, you'd think they'd get rid of anomalies like that. Also, it only peaked at number 61 on the Billboard Hot 100. 
I hope it didn't really affect the score of 1997, which also included songs like Biggie's Hypnotize at number one, which had these 18 line long verses to go with, yes, a fairly repetitive hook, but either way, it achieved a compression score of 0.92, so not super compressible according to their computers. Anyway, the 50s and 60s. First off, you'd have someone write a song and then like 10 artists perform it until someone made it popular, or a song would get popular and everyone would record their own version of it. The Champs' Tequila, for example, was recorded by at least 10 other artists in the 50s and 60s. It doesn't appear in this data for some reason. But what about Wooly Bully, a song that's effectively just the words Wooly Bully and Watch It Now repeated a bunch of times with three very simple four-line verses? Well, despite it being number two on the Billboard Hot 100, they didn't even give it a score suggesting it's not even part of the data for 1965, when it definitely should be. Also missing that same year, Sonny and Cher's I Got You Babe, which says I Got You 22 times and is a very simplistic song. No score. So what did they give a score to? What is included in the data? Well, how about the Beach Boys I Get Around? which includes the words get around about 47 times, or the word round, including as part of the word around, 90 times, and also has two very short verses. They're both about driving cars and not being tied down to just one woman. They gave it a 1.6. Or how about the Beatles Love Me Do, number one in 1964. Love is said 26 times in two and a half minutes, basically once every 5.7 seconds. It got a 1.63 compression score. A lot of those really early Beatles songs, I Wanna Hold Your Hand, She Loves You, all very repetitive and all very popular. And there's so much missing here in terms of truly determining the simplicity of a song besides just repetition. What are the themes or the concepts of the song and how easy are they to understand? Songs like American Woman, where it's apparently not obvious to everyone that it's a Canadian band saying they don't want any part of America's politics and war effort. People just think it's about a hot American chick. Or Fortunate Son being about being shipped off to Vietnam because he's not a rich kid. He's not the fortunate one. Obviously not as simple as, say, I want to hold your hand, which is about wanting to hold a girl's hand. It doesn't look at music production either, which has got more complex over the years, whether you'd like to admit it or not. More work goes into it these days than, uh, all right, everyone, just stand in a room and play our instruments until we get a take we like. Uh, but Buckley, you haven't mentioned any modern pop hits that are complex. Oh, I'm not saying that modern pop music isn't repetitive, simple trash. What I'm saying is, it's always been. If this wasn't a pretty flat line, then I had kind of been expecting a graph that looked more like an arc. The 50s and 60s being really simple, easy to digest, pretty repetitive lyrics. And then in the late 60s and 70s, as the Vietnam War went on and various protest songs were made, lyrics got a little more heady. Then we have the late 70s and disco, and you got songs like Jungle Boogie and Ladies Night from Cool and the Gang, which have no substance, and also don't seem to have been given a score on this list. And then you head into the 80s until now with a steady incline of less and less to say in pop music. I mean, even their example of the song with the lowest compression score, Nat King Cole's The Christmas Song. You all know the song. Instrumentally, it's pretty minimalist, and the lyrics are just a bunch of shit about Christmas. It's cold, Santa's coming, kids are excited. If the metric is, well, that's a very complex song. In fact, it's the most complex song in our data set. That tells you how serious you should take this study. Yeah, today's modern music couldn't possibly reach the complexity of chestnuts roasting on an open fire, Jack Frost nipping at your nose. What a genius. Your nose gets cold in the winter. Oh, we'll never see writing like that again. And even the graph is in increments of 0.1. If you scaled this to the top end song of 5 and the bottom end song of 0.11, you have, effectively, a line going slightly up. And what about all those missing songs? The study proves nothing, especially when you're leaving out songs that were top 10 hits, like 1976, Steve Miller Band's Fly Like an Eagle and Rockin' Me, 
both pretty repetitive songs, number one and two on Billboard, two of the most popular songs that year, not included in this data that's claiming that the most popular songs are getting more and more simple. In fact, they admit that they only included about 14,000 out of 27,405 songs. They're missing 4,415 songs in the top 40 alone and 220 number one hits. You can't talk about the most popular songs of all time when you're leaving out the most popular songs of all time. And they don't seem to give a reason for why they omitted so many very popular songs. But hey, you can take that article, post it on your Facebook and go, See? Music is getting dumber. Science man say so. And feel validated while ignoring the fact that 63 years ago, for three weeks in a row, the lyrics to the most popular song in the USA were Ooh ee, ooh ah ah, ting tang, walla walla bing bang. What a more intelligent era.